This lesson is going to be an example of some of the things that you can do with JavaScript, how we can set an attribute, and in this case we're going to be making the editable, the content editable, as well as we're adding an event listener to the content so we can click it, and that's going to trigger the event. And this event is actually going to be updating this background style property. So if it's red, it will set it to white. If it's white, or if there's not red, then it will set it to red when it gets clicked. We're also going to be running a function that's going to reverse the order of the text. And I'll show you how you can chain together various methods in order to accomplish this. And then lastly, we're also outputting that result back into the inner text. So visually for the user, they have the ability to update it. They also have the option to edit and interact with it and reverse the order of the text that's being displayed within the output element. So it's all coming up in this lesson. I've added an HTML file, linked it to the JavaScript code, and I've got just the one div here with a class of output. So let's select that element from the page using JavaScript, and we'll assign it to an object called output, a variable name called output, and using the document query selector, Let's select the element with a class of output. And we'll also create a string. So this can just be a temporary string that we're going to use. And within the temporary string, we'll output hello world. And for the output inner text, we'll assign a value of whatever the temporary string value is. So we're outputting hello world. And let's actually make this clickable. So we've got our output element, add an event listener. The event listener that we're adding is going to be a click event. And whenever that element gets clicked, then we're going to apply some properties to it. So take output and add in a check to see what the background color is. So we'll set that up as the background and take the output element and style and then get the background color value. And so for now, we'll output it into the console. So we don't have a background color for it yet. So we can have a condition. So if it's equal to red. And we're going to probably have to update and have the hex value of it. So we'll console log the background color and then we'll adjust it afterwards. So if it's red, then we're going to set the background color. And if it's not red, then we're going to set the background color to be red. So assign that property to have a value of red. So this will give us ability to toggle it. So right now the background color is red and we've got the background color of red. So if it is red, then we'll assign a new background color of white to it. So that allows us to toggle it just to kind of see that that element is active. So what we want to do is we want to take the content of that input element and we want to reverse it. So let's add that and select the content and then we'll update it and reverse the color. So we can do that before or after the condition. And we'll make a separate function in order to manage that. I'll move that up to the top so it's a little bit easier to read. And with the function, and this is going to be the reverse string function. And it's going to take the one parameter so that will be the value of the string that we want to reverse. So making it as dynamic as possible, so we're not tying it to a specific string value, and we can use it through our code to reverse the string value. So let's uh, create a holder. So this is going to be a temporary holding value that we can use to return back the string value, and then ultimately we'll return back the holder value. So we want to loop through the strings and then generate that new string item. So for the val, we can go through for each, 
and this is going to get each one of the letters and right now we can just console log the letter and we'll run the function here where it's going to take in the value of the output so we'll take the value of the output text content so we're not able to go through each letter of the value as this is going to be for the array so let's convert it into an array and we'll take the value and using split I'm going to split it into an array and then we can loop through each one of the items of the array and for the split we need to add in the flag that we're splitting it by so we're just splitting it by and splitting it to by the each space so that creates an array that we can loop through and that gives us each one of the letters so we don't actually have to once it's in an array format we can do an array do an array reverse and that will reverse order the contents for the array and then we're still outputting them so if we do need to make any updates to those letters we can do that as well if we want to get the character we can output the as letter as we loop through the array but in order to reverse it we don't actually need to loop through them because the array method has the reverse to it so now let's take the value of holder and what we'll do is we'll take array and using join we're going to join it together so it's going to return back the value of holder and here we can just assign a value of val to it and we'll output that into the console and I'll leave the for each in but we don't actually need to use it so now we've got a reversed order and we want to join it with no spaces so that gives us the reverse order of the words and we can even shorten this even more where we can assign the value of holder and that means that we don't need that statement in addition with array methods you can chain them together so that gives you an option to really minimize the amount of code that you need and altogether we can minimize both of those statements where we're returning back and we've got the joint value being returned back and I can leave that in as otherwise it's throwing an error but this way we can do this within one statement where we're simply splitting it doing a reverse and then joining it back together as a string value so now we've got an event that we click it and we can reverse the order of the output so let's update the output inner text with what we have for the new value so as we click it it's going to be reverse ordering that let's apply to the output element so we'll also make it that the user can interact so setting the attribute and the attribute that we're setting is going to be the content editable content and assign that to a value of true so now when you click on it you can start typing into it and every time you click on it as well it's going to be reversing the order of the content in the element so that's how you can add the attribute and allow the content to be editable and what that does is that allows the content editable sets it to true as you click on it it's been a quick example of how you can create some interactive text content update reversing the text that's currently within the element and also make it editable.